Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of The Observatory. Today, we're going to be chatting with Mark Grover. He's the founder and CEO of Stemma, and he's also the co-creator of the Amundsen Data Catalog. Mark, welcome to the first episode of The Observatory. Oh, my pleasure, Kyle. Super glad to be here. Uh, so, Mark, we got a few uh, questions for you today, uh, largely around your work in the data catalog space. Uh, and then I've got a, a few uh, quick ones for you at the end that should be fun. But to get us started, uh, why don't you tell us what, what even are data catalogs? And, and I think what a lot of people might want to know is how did you get interested in data catalogs in the first place? Yeah, for sure. Uh, a data catalog is a system that allows you to be able to search, understand, discover and trust the data that's present in the organization. And I got this problem, uh, got into this problem out of necessity uh, instead of desire. Uh, I was working at Lyft prior to starting Stemma. And the problem I saw was Lyft had all their data consolidated in one central data lake in the cloud. Um, but there were two things happening in terms of growth at Lyft. One was the amount of data at Lyft was growing exponentially every year. And second, the number of people who were being hired at Lyft was also growing like crazy every year, right? The combination of these two things meant that there was a ton of data. And then these people who were being hired in roles like operations management, general management, product management, data scientists, data, uh, data analysts, data engineers, of course, we're all wanting to use data. And the combination of those two things meant that there were a lot of questions on this internal Slack channel called analytics questions about, do we have this data? Who else has used this data? Who knows the most about this data? How do I use this data? When was the last updated? Can I trust it? These were the questions that kept getting asked on Slack over and over again. Um, and I had looked at some solutions that claimed to solve this problem in the past. Um, and I evaluated those and they were very much focused on uh, curation as a means of solving that problem. So Kyle is the data steward for the ETA area or the marketplace area. And we will get Kyle to document this whole wiki page style thing for the ETA area, right? And that says like, this is a certified source of truth and here's the people you should ask. But in a fast growing company like Lyft, uh, that was really um, untenable, right? And the moment you would even document something like this, it would be out of date the next day. And that pushed me to create um, an automated data catalog that, that's what's called Amundsen, that is able to leverage metadata from your query logs, from your BI tools, from your team HR system, from your Slack, and then be able to put them all together to power a view, uh, similar to how Google did for the web, to be able to search for data within the organization. That thing was super successful at Lyft, 750 users every week, 80% of data engineers and data scientists use it every week. Then we open sourced it. Uh, and in open source, there's companies like Instacart, Brax, Asana, Square, Workday, ING, all use it. And Stemma is a is an automated data catalog inspired by that work uh, in Amundsen and in open source, providing the same uh, capabilities of understanding, trusting your data to the larger enterprise. And that's how I got involved. Uh, what, I mean, I think one, one question is I've seen different data catalogs that have sprung up at other companies as well as internal projects. Some of them never made it to open source the same way Amundsen did. Uh, was, was open source like a, a key point of interest or something that you had an intention for at the beginning? Um, it wasn't something that was a clear intention for me. In fact, um, when I evaluated these off-the-shelf products um, and didn't find them satisfactory, I went to uh, a few companies in, in the Bay Area to see if they had the problem and how were they solving that problem. And the three conversations I recall very vividly were um, Netflix, Facebook, and Airbnb. And it was pretty clear from talking to those companies' data teams that they all had uh, this problem. And they were all trying to build these miniature data catalogs internally that were automated, right? And I asked each of them, would you open source the thing that you're working on so we could leverage that and not have to build one? And the problem was each of these products were built very custom to the organization. A lot of reasons different for each company, but had one of those projects been open sourced, maybe Amundsen wouldn't exist, right? But none of those projects uh, were generic enough to be usable at any companies, and none of those organizations were incentivized enough to open that up and spend effort and energy in making that so. So the thing that we started with Amundsen was an idea that 
uh, perhaps had been toured with at other companies, but we we felt like the artifacts, the nomenclature, the entities were all uh, universal in in uh, existence. And so all we had to do was build some constructs in the product that would allow you to plug in your own data warehouse, right? Like Lyft was very heavy on Hive and Presto and Redshift. But what if you use BigQuery or Snowflake, which Lyft didn't, right? And um, can you plug in your own integration? And I think that was the part that, that we really benefited from open source was that we built some constructs and then others were able to ingest and integrate their data warehouses, their BI tools pretty easily. I feel like people, like especially historically in data, I mean, I, I think about, you know, I, I started uh, working as an analyst uh, originally back in 2012 or something like that. And I, I feel like especially at that time, obviously data's been around for, you know, however long, decades, many decades. But uh, I feel like we we have a, a, maybe it's not entirely unique to the data field, but they definitely have like this a uh, wide variety of backgrounds that folks come into data and data engineering from. Um, so it's interesting to hear sort of your background there. I wonder, do you feel like it has changed much these days? Or are, are the folks that you see kind of coming into data, uh, is, are the paths in now different from they might have been in the past? Or would you have any advice for somebody who's sort of starting their career out in data or data engineering in some way? I don't think the degrees in data were as common and they are maybe a little more common now, but mostly only in data science world, not even data engineering. And so folks that I've seen enter data engineering are um, software developers, usually um, that have a knack for attention to detail. Like there's a taste that's involved. Like maybe if I were to zoom back out, right? Like if I were to just take data engineering and piece that apart, I think data engineering involves two things. One is a tasteful design of the data model, right? And your data model um, should be just broad enough, but not too broad, not too narrow. Your data model should be just deep enough and you got to be very judicious about what the grain of the data set is and why you choose that. So that's like a very tasteful exercise. I do not think that can be automated. That will remain a data engineer's job going forward, no matter what, right? The second part of the data engineer's job is optimization. I'm writing Snowflake pipeline and it's not, it's taking more than 24 hours to complete when it runs every every week, every day, right? Uh, that stuff is like nuanced. It requires a lot of uh, sort of understanding of Snowflake internals. And this has gotten better. Like in Hive, it was 100x worse, right? That part I think is gonna get easier and easier thanks to technologies that exist and they'll make it easier and easier to do less and less mistakes, right? So someone could say like, hey, this part is actually gonna get more and more automated and more of data engineering time would be spent in, in this modeling work, right? And so I think still the modeling work is uh, tasteful and I think analysts often carry a good taste for this. People have used data in the past, um, carry a good taste for that. And some people intrinsically have very good taste for that. Others that come from a more traditional software engineering background, they would be just out of the bat pretty good with optimization. But this um, this data modeling part would be a place where they would have to build a little more taste. And in my opinion, there's no better way to do that than to get some experience under the belt. Don't know if I'm answering your question or not. Yeah, totally. I, I think it's interesting that you describe it as, as taste because it, it really is kind of subjective, right? And the way the decisions that you make when you're designing the data model are going to have a huge impact on how easy it is to use in different types of applications or by different people or how easy to understand it is. Um, and it, it's interesting to hear it described as, as taste because I, I think that's actually a pretty good word for it um, because you, you could make these different subjective design decisions and they're going to have different strengths. And to make those decisions, you're going to have to kind of understand not just the fundamentals of the data you're working with, but also you, you need to understand or predict how the, the users of the data and the consumers are going to need to interact with it. Uh, so this is actually a really great segue into my third question. Um, so I, I'm always curious to hear how people see the space evolving. Everybody's got a different perspective and they approach it from a different angle. So I want to ask, how do you see within within the larger data ecosystem, data discovery, data cataloging, um, this area that you you know you have all, all this experience in? How do you ex how do you see that evolving over the next several years? Um, and what roles do you see Amundsen and Stemma playing in that? For sure. Um, I see evolution uh, in three key ways. The first one is that data cataloging has historically been used 
uh, from a risk management perspective. And so the idea is, say you work for a large financial organization, you have certain amount of data sets that you need to report to a regulator for um, compliance purposes. And what you do is you stand up uh, one of these uh, data catalog systems that are um, uh, that are maybe 10 years old, and then you end up uh, using them for essentially doing process management around data. So someone can do a shopping cart style checkout of the data, and then uh, this approver or governor would approve or reject that request. And you're essentially tightly controlling a very small subset of data within the organization for compliance purposes. So one thing I, um, I believe will evolve very strong, very strongly is that these catalogs will not just be used for regulatory and compliance purposes, but these would be used for democratization, enablement, uh, data mesh style purposes, right? So the idea is that an analyst who uses Tableau every day would also use a data catalog every day, much like you and I use Google every day to search, right? This is a solved problem in Google. Like I remember maybe one or two different websites that I typed the link to, to the URL directly, but most of the time my entry point is Google. And I think that's one, uh, one place I see that change happening. Um, the second place where I see change happening is that historically data catalogs have been more of a curation exercise. So like I was saying earlier, you appoint data stewards who put in this information. Technology has come a long way in the last 10 years where you can take a bunch of these existing systems, Snowflake, Redshift, BigQuery. These are the three most common warehouses you can take BI tools, Tableau, Mode Looker, and build uh, processes that uh, scrape, infer, um, augment metadata that comes from these systems. So I know Kyle and Mark work in the same team. Kyle uses this table all the time. Mark, maybe you should too, right? Or I know a new executive is looking at this dashboard and hey, data engineer, uh, if you're changing this, like be aware of this having an impact on the executive dashboard, right? And so all that to say that curation will play still a role, but not the majority role. Automation will come in and then curation will be used to review, augment the metadata that comes from automation. So that's uh, theme number two. Third is that the personas who have used the data catalog in the past have been limited to data governance persona, again, tied to the point number one I was making. And I find that these personas now have to not just be the analyst, which I think is pretty well understood, but also the data engineer who's using this to um, triage, you know, when say a data quality check fails, right? Uh, to, to triage, who do I notify if I'm gonna change or deprecate this table? So to summarize these three themes, um, I feel like catalogs will not be used just for governance and regulatory needs, but for enabling data democratization. Um, I feel, that catalog, or I believe that catalogs will not be curated, but more automated. And third, I believe that the personas who use the catalogs will be more diverse, definitely data engineers, uh, data scientists, as well as business users. I think that that makes a ton of sense. I definitely see that, uh, or I, I think I agree with that prediction. Um, well, thanks, Mark. Those were sort of the big juicy questions I wanted to talk to you about today. I do have uh, three rapid fire ones for you just to, to round us out. Number one uh, is uh, you've lived in a couple places, I think. What is the favorite place that you've lived so far? Boulder, Colorado. I'm happy to share more details. Okay. All right. Great. Number two, uh, are you still actively coding? <laughs> Not quite. I, uh, I, last I changed was the website for uh, first demo two weeks ago. Okay, well, uh, it still counts. You're on the edge, you're on the edge. Okay, and number three, uh, if you could change any one uh, data buzzword, and we have plenty of them these days, uh, what what would you change? I would change data governance. I think a lot of people put tons of stuff in here, and uh, that word can probably be broken down into a, a more meaningful words so that we can have a better conversation as a community than that particular word. Just a little more specificity. Cool. All right. Well, Mark, uh, thanks so much for chatting with me today. Uh, Ed, thanks for being on the first episode of The Observatory. If you want to learn more about either Stemma or Amundsen, uh, we have links down in the description below, so you can click those to check it out. And I will see you all next time.